Now, in this part, we, I will show you how to configure the, the services and generate the services using, um, using the Swagger API. Uh, the Swagger API generator or the Swagger uh, code generator. Uh, first thing to do is that we need to add this dependency in the dev dependencies, which is uh, ng Swagger gen, and the version you can choose the version uh, 1.7.0. And there are like uh, several commands to we need to add. The main uh, the main one uh, the main one is uh, the to do api the one i showed you that we need to run to generate the application the, sorry to generate the services and the api so let's go through uh, each command of it so first first one is the to do api create this so this one this is like a simple command it will create a directory under uh, under the project so this one we have the command uh, make directory minus p uh, in tools slash swagger code gen slash dist so it's gonna be here as we see here we have the tools yeah it's gonna be here and it will, we will create this uh, those folders and we will create also the sfc file so inside this swagger code gen the, inside tools slash swagger code gen we will find two folders which are this and src and those are and i will explain next what uh, what is inside so this is the first the first one the first command is where we will uh, create the folder and then we will run the download what is the download in our case we will just copy uh, copy the resource files which are uh, the jar and the swagger file so what we will do here, it's the copy command from this is the absolute path of the jar file. And you will copy it to the tools, the swagger code gen slash dist. And then we will copy the swagger.json file that we already generated from the backend to the, the tools, the swagger code gen slash src. And next, uh, we will run the to do API extract. That means we will extract uh, the API documentation and the definition of the models, the, um, the paths, and all the services we, we already created on the backend. We will extract them. So, this is, the, this is the command to do API extract. So, what we will do, we will use the node command to generate the Swagger code gen with this version. 011, uh, 001 snapshot. And the last one is the to do API swagger gen generation. That means generation. So what we will uh, what will we generate? So we get the swagger uh, the ng swagger generator from node module slash bin slash ng swagger gen minus e what do we want to generate? We want to generate the API documentation from this file which we already copied in our uh, in our project and the output this is the input this one and the output is going to be in, uh, uh, src src uh, to do api slash src so it's going to be here it's going to be to do api slash src so here we will automatically generate the models which are the category user and to, to do and the services we generate the, a bunch of services which is every time we have the api annotation it's going to be uh, a different or an independent service so for example we have this is the main one and we have the api category service api to do and api users and also we have for the authentication api and then we have like a configuration and the model services and so on and so forth. So this is, this is really quite easy to generate uh, the API documentation using the Swagger, the Swagger code gen from the Angular side. So, and here let's check together what was generated. For example, if I go to the user, this is exactly the same, uh, the same DTO or the same DTO or the same structure as we have it in the backend as user DTO. And also we can see that it has also the same name. 
we have the ID, first name, last name, email, password, username, and password. And this exclamation, uh, sorry, this under interrogation mark, that means this is this can be optional. Also, let's go check the category. Inside the category, we have uh, the ID, name, description, and we have the user and the to-do list inside the category. And inside the to-do, we have ID, title, description, the start date, uh, done, favorite. And also we have the types here, for example, Boolean, uh, string for the description and the start date. And also we have the category of the to-do. So those are the models. Let's, let's check the services. Let's, let's take, for example, the category service. And here we have, we can see the definition of, uh, of the URLs. For example, to delete the category, this is the URL. To get all to do by categories for today path, <coughs> sorry, those are uh, the paths. Uh, for example, let's check the update category path, which is API category slash update, and so on and so forth. And here, actually it's generated in two ways. We have the method, this is, that this is the main method that we, we will use, which is delete category. And we will, for example, we, will, we need to pass the ID as a parameter and it's gonna call the delete, uh, delete category response, which is this method. And to explain it better, let's take uh, another one. Let's take, for example, the update category. This, uh, this method is responsible to update or to, to save a new category. So here we accept as, uh, as body uh, an object of category DTU type. And then what we will return, we will return update category response, which is this method. And it takes the same parameter. And then we have the new parameter, we add the header. And here, this is the request type. This is a patch or a post or a get, for example, delete also, if, if we want to delete something. And this is the root URL. When I go here to the root URL, so it's defined in the API configuration here. And this root URL is generated from the, from the base path, from the Swagger, uh, sorry, from the, um, yeah, the Maven uh, plugin, uh, plugin and the pom.xml. So let's go back here. Yeah. So this is the base URL and this is the, the path to update a category, for example. And here we generate the header and the body. So those are the parameters that we need to pass for this new HTTP request. We have the headers, the params, and the response type should be a JSON. <coughs> and then we just execute this, uh, this method. And the best thing uh, about this, uh, this this generation, as you can see here, we don't we don't even uh, we don't even need to to write any line of code for this. It's automatically generated, and everything is going to be. For example, when when uh, when you do an update on the backend part and regenerate the API, it's going to be automatically updated. So there is no need to write any uh, any line of code. And it's the same thing for the for the other APIs, for the to-dos and users, and also the authentication. For example, for the authentication API, we have only the login. This is the only method I created uh, for the authentication. And here we have this method called login user, and it takes as a parameter the user DTO. And as I explained, it will call automatically the login user response. And then we compose our request, which is a post with this path and the parameters, which is the body. So let's have a look on the API configuration. Here in the API configuration, for example, we, we configure the, the root URL. And if you have for, for further uh, information or configuration, it's, it can be added here. And here, this the API modules. So this one is, is automatically generated also. And here we say that we have those providers to use, which is API configuration, uh, service, API service, uh, API to do service, and so on and so forth. Here we have the base, the base service, which is uh, the base uh, or the, 
let's say if I may call it the abstract class to run uh, all the um, all the methods or all the HTTP requests. Here we have the models. It's a simple class which will only export the, the, DTO, the DTOs we have. So like this, when we import one DTO or when we use it, it's going to be automatically uh, exported and generated. So there is no need to, to write it. And also the same for the services.ts class. And this is also like the generic part of uh, of the HTTP responses. So this is this is really quite easy, and uh, I see it's like really recommended to to use the the Swagger code generation. So like this, we we gain a lot of time in the coding part. Uh, at least we don't we don't need to to code all those methods and all those um, API calls or HTTP calls manually. So I hope this part is also clear. And also, if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to, to contact me.